My guest today is actor, comedian, writer, and musician Michael McKeon. He's best known for playing squiggy sidekick Lenny on Laverne and Shirley and David St. Hibbins on This Is Spinal Tap. He was a cast member on Saturday Night Live and he plays Chuck McGill on the Breaking Bad spin-off Better Call Saul. We welcome him to Collector's Cafe. You've worked with some of the greats in comedy. What made Laverne and Shirley such a big hit? We rode in on the coattails of Happy Days, so there was a certain 50s, 60s nostalgia thing happening. Benny Marshall and Cindy Williams had a great chemistry, and David and I had known each other for nine years before we did that show. We'd done those characters kind of in private. Were there lessons learned on Saturday Night Live? Start when you're younger. I was 46. I mean, I was the oldest person ever hired until Sharon. Aaron Jones. You would think that a show like that would have more older characters. What happened was they had Phil Hartman. They knew he was going to leave the show after eight seasons. I had just worked with Lorne on Coneheads, the movie. So maybe he can be David Spade's dad now, you know, when we need <laughs> a, a slightly older presence. Why do Christopher Guest films become iconic? Well, his secret is he hires people that make him laugh. They really, really know their onions. I mean, some of the great improvisers, Jennifer Coolidge and Michael Higgins and Fred Willard, who is an Love from Fred. another planet. He's, he's, <laughs> he he's from the planet funny. Better Call Saul. What will we find attractive about it? What will pour us into it? You're watching the simultaneous rise and fall of a character, Jimmy McGill's character, who becomes eventually becomes Saul Goodman. I'm not the best big brother you could have. I am very deeply distrustful of, uh, of Jimmy's motives, as well I should be. But I ain't a saint, and I'm certainly a sneak. <laughs> you enjoy playing that. <laughs> Let's talk a little collectibles. What do you collect? I have a lot of science fiction books. There was a time when I read nothing but science fiction. If I liked a book, I hung on to it thinking, well, maybe 40 years from now, I'll want to read it again. Back I knew up. Isaac Asimov. I interviewed him many times. Oh, wow. He was a smart dude. And who was the other one? Great uh, Fahrenheit 451. Uh, Bradbury. Bradbury. I met Ray Bradbury one time. Do you remember Phil Foster who played sure. Laverne? Yeah. So he was on Laverne and Shirley. I didn't have my car one day and he gave me a ride to the bank. So we were leaving Paramount, and we see Ray Bradbury standing at the bus stop. And I go, oh my God, that's Ray Bradbury there. And why is he taking a bus, says Phil. And I said, well, he doesn't drive. He, he's never driven. Yeah, that's right. So I said, well, let's give him a ride. So Ray Bradbury got in the car with us. So all the way from Paramount to the Hong Kong bank, we picked his brain, and he was just, he was as awesome as you wanted him to be. He was just fabulous. Is there a collectible you wish you had? A, a first edition of uh, More Than Human by Theodore Sturgeon would be lovely, but my tattered paperback of, of More Than Human is as precious as anything. What makes good science fiction? The hook. Somebody once put it this way, you can say that pigs can fly, but you better have a really good scientific reason. It has to make sense. There's a wonderful book called uh, Lord of Light by Roger Zelazny, and the premise is that all the gods of India really exist, but they're on another planet. And we go and we visit this other planet, and we see what Krishna does with his spaceship. Plays by the rules. Absolutely. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Larry. Michael McKeon, you can find him on Twitter at MJ McKeon. Catch season two of Better Call Saul returning to AMC February 15th at 10 Eastern, 9 Central. See you next time on Collector's Cafe.